what's your opinion on resellers being at both Goodwill locations and shopping on your website? Um, so resellers, I think. Hi everyone, just a really quick one today because I want to get to the park before the sun goes down. It's actually starting to warm up in Canberra, so it's actually quite nice today. Probably about 13 to 14 degrees, uh, which is you know, 20, maybe 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comment section because I am useless with weathers. Um, so basically today we're looking at a video that was rolled out by Tice Tice Baby. It came out about three weeks ago. And pretty much, I think it's gone through a couple of name changes. Where's Goodwill's donations or best donations go? We're looking at that video today. Um, so realistically, from a new reseller perspective, we're seeing a lot of people coming into the market. They watch a lot of uh, YouTube content. They watch a lot of um, social media and all those different things that are bringing them into the market. This is something that I've been bringing on for a while. We actually spoke about this in our podcast uh, that comes out on Tuesday. Uh, realistically, it's something you really, really, really need to be on top of. Um, I will be interjecting through the video, but really quickly, I just want to bring up that uh, Salvo is what we're going to talk today. They're actually doing the same thing at the moment. Um, so we're actually looking at Goodwill, but if you look at the cross of the Salvos, they're actually shop, at, shop, shop on eBay. So they're actually doing a auction uh, and so also got a, a Depop store there as well. So what you want to be very careful of is that these organizations are cutting you out of the equation, right? So reselling's not dead yet. Um, however, give it a couple of years and hopefully a couple of years time we reflect on this video, I'm incorrect. Um, however, it's quickly becoming apparent to me that they're outpricing resellers in the market. So I want to show you a quick page. So this is what was found in a Salvation Army store in, um, I believe it was in Sydney, but I'm not too sure, but RM Williams for $400. If you look at the, the toe, uh, they're really scruffed. Uh, regardless, you, you could fix them with the appropriate care. Uh, the little tag at the top has obviously uh, seen some better days as well. But this is $400. Uh, in the military, we get very similar shoes to these. These cost us $400 brand new. Um, and the retail rate on these ones are about four, five hundred, six hundred. 500, 600. Uh, so basically, beaten up pair of shoes. Uh, Salvo is giving it to you for a cut price of $200 off. <laughs> so be very mindful that, that is happening. Um, I did a short about a week ago where we actually discussed, um, I heard pricing in Vinnie's. Um, so basically what they're looking at is a high price item. Uh, they wanted to have it in the store for $2,000 just as a, a display piece. Um, they had no interest in selling it. They were going to leave it in store for a month or a month and a half from memory. Uh, then they're going to move it into the auction house, which is fine. Like, I really have no idea, uh, no issues with um, charities using that money to support their causes when it's an ego um, or look at us. We have a $2,000 item in the store. Comes a little bit jaded from that perspective. But... If you've gone to your local Goodwill lately in search of a true steal, the odds are you've walked out empty handed. Uh, these charity stores probably need to <laughs> rework their prices a little bit. Uh, just to be mindful of who their consumer is. And it's all that just, yeah, stock turnover. We've mentioned this numerous times. If they make their prices um, appropriate, I'm not saying that from primarily selling to resellers, um, but I do have some ideas uh, on how we can actually handle that and probably discuss later in the video. Uh, however, you realistically, you're selling to the, the less fortunate, um, all those people that don't have much disposable income. So realistically, you know, <laughs> read the room kind of thing. Big reason for that is shopgoodwill.com, which is Goodwill's e-commerce store. Today, they have been kind enough and we've been given special access to go in and see the whole process on how they choose the best. So pretty much what I showed you with uh, Salvos. So... I don't know if Vinnie's actually have a shop Goodwill or a shop Salvo store um, website, but it's only a matter of time, right? These are becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, I have read in the comments and the comments aren't, <laughs> aren't flattering towards Goodwill in any capacity. So I dare say that Salvos and Vinnie's are going to go down the, the same path eventually. You know, what I would do is I would make most opportune uh, or take an opportunity of the basically um, being able to resell when you can. So don't, you know, don't sit on your laurels and, you know, whinge and complain and carry on. Get in, make as much money as you can, have an exit strategy and get out. Uh, you don't start charging $34.99 if you believe there's longevity in the market. If there's anyone in Canberra, uh, Salvos or Vinnie's, I've got a big, strong hunch that you actually watch these videos. So please, by all means, reach out to me via email. I would love to go behind the scenes uh, just to see the, how the whole process works, how your pricing strategy works. Uh, 
I'd run a video, obviously like very similar to what Tice is doing in this video, but I really need to understand <laughs> what 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 is going on um, with the pricing structure and all these different things. Yes, I know overheads and all these different things, but I'd be quite curious to receive an invitation to come out the back and pretty much hear your side of the story just to go from that perspective. So invite me. Phil, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Product comes in, we use the tipper to go ahead and tip it up so that way we're not bending over killing our backs. Yeah, yeah, I saw uh, the tipper at the, at the other. WHS or OHS uh, is important. So make sure when even when you're around your house, picking up low level items, bend with your knees, not your back. Uh, that's my public service announcement for the day. And while you're at it, might as well subscribe because I'm helpful and helping you back. Thank you. <laughs> Their location, same thing. Uh, big, yeah, like... this one's a little. So if you look in the background, right, um, I'll bring me back on the screen. So, oops, where am I going? Jeez, this is why I can't have nice things. Inventory system looks quite familiar. So I would dare say that, you know, Salvo's, Goodwill's, uh, Vinny's for extensive purposes are watching a lot of reselling content. And I would be very, 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 very surprised if they're not actually uh, in a certain group that charges you $34.99 a month and actually reaping all the rewards. So in essence, instead of them going to the person that owns that group and saying, hey, look, here's $100,000 or how much money it is to buy out your stock list or buy out your you know, your processes and all these different things, which, you know, personally, I'd probably give it to them for $100,000. Uh, they're paying thirty-four ninety-nine a month, skimming off um, all the different things. And he does mention later the, all the products that they keep an eye out for, and, you know, obviously send to this distribution center to, you know, to sell online. And so be very, very mindful is that who's in those groups with you? And like I said in the podcast that's coming out on Tuesday, I'm actually running lives on a Friday night. They're actually being instantly deleted or delisted after they cease. So if you don't catch it within that 45-minute hour window, you're not going to see it. And I'll discuss bolos. I'll discuss all these different things, uh, how to research products and all these different things. Because I've got a sneaking suspicion that, you know, especially the Salvation Army, because you know, my, my niche is Skylanders, uh, which is a bit obscure, um, they're starting to mark Skylanders up. So I dare say they are watching content, not necessarily mine, uh, but they are watching content and learning niches from content creators uh, and cutting us out of the market. You need to be very, very mindful of that. Oh, this Smaller, is the tipper, okay. This the stores and they go ahead and kind of select higher value items once it gets to the facility. Even the racking system, uh, the infantry system, the way they probably uh, process the items, I was in the daily refinement group uh, probably about 12 months ago now. This is very, very resonant of what they're teaching that environment. So please, please, please be very mindful of who you are in groups with uh, because inadvertently you could be helping um, people that ultimately want to cut you out of the equation, which is the case here. We give it another sort to make sure it's up to the standard and it's something that we can Got sell. It. How do they know what to look for, I guess? Is there like a, a, a list of things for them? This is very important. Make sure you pay attention to this. If there's only one part of this video you watch, and by all means, I will put Tice, Tice Baby's uh, video in the in the comment section below, sorry, in the description below. Check him out. Uh, I'm only going to splice this video up to little bits to give you an idea. Um, it's a phenomenal video. It's had a lot of views, and quite possibly, you really need to be on top of this thing. To look for? Or... Yeah, so we have kind of uh, some documents that keep in store list and always send to e commerce list. So that will give them kind of a blueprint. So this goes back to what I was saying before. This, these are brands that are probably, they're generic brands, right? In the sense that, you know, people probably know about these ones. but. Um, a lot of these ones will probably be divulged from resellers that are into different niches. They'd be talking about Dixon Flannel. I don't know if it's on there, but that's what I personally wear and look for. Um, you know, Lululemon, all these different things, Carhartts, um, Patagonia, all the ones that I, I've actually heard. I hate selling clothing <laughs> so they can have all the clothes. I don't care. Um, however, when it comes into, obviously, everyone's niches, right? So it just doesn't only affect clothing. Uh, they talk about Lego later on, which I sell a whole bit, bunch of Lego. Um, they also talk about, you know, collectible toys, vintage toys, and all these different things that we've all got niches and we're all affected by this. So be very, very, very mindful um, of, like I said, who's watching your content if you're that way inclined. Brands, um, also different items that we're looking for, such as Lego, ah, off Pyrex, the, the very unique. So I know personally, I haven't talked about Lego very often. Uh, my secret store per se is lego um, it's not that hard to find you could probably work it out who it is um 
but Pyrex and Tupperware and all those different things are, you know, are mentioned numerous times and religiously by uh, the Commonwealth picker, Kevin, um, probably a lot of other YouTube content that's creators over in the States talk about Pyrex and Tupperware. We don't really talk about it over here in Australia. So <laughs> maybe Grandpa Granny might talk about that stuff. Uh, but definitely, definitely, definitely keep an eye out. Uh, and even go back, you know, go to Tice Tice's video, go back a couple of minutes um, and, you know, write down the, the brands because, hey, you might as well steal off them as well. Items too. Um, but yeah, like they're saying, I have really, and I've said numerous times, I don't care. They People can donate where they want to donate and all these different things as long as it's going to a worthwhile cause and as long as it's traceable, right? Um, I know Goodwills pay their CEOs and their top executives a ton of money, <laughs> uh, same as Salvation Army and Vinnie's. Um, you're a charity, or well, not so much goodwill, uh, but our thrift stores are charities, uh, and act like it. Really, start paying your, your CEOs and all those different things because it's not hard to, <laughs> you know, get donations for free and distribute them. So eh, I don't know. Maybe I could be the CEO. One of my favorites, like uranium glass. So this is definitely something we would list. So uranium glass, I know there's a, a content creator and I can't think of his name. By all means, please put it down in the comment section below so I can list his channel in there as well. Um, he actually talks about uranium glass. Uranium glass had a bit of a fad probably about six months ago on YouTube. It's going around. Um, everyone knows that, that torch, well, not everyone knows, but that torch is actually handling now. It's called a black light torch. Um, a few of the rich sellers that I talk to and, and watch as well is that they actually hand out business cards so they go you might be a case of going to office works or your local stationery store or something along the lines of that printing out maybe a thousand five hundred you know two thousand leaflets or yeah pamphlets depending on what the size it is and just go for a walk do a letterbox drop um say hey look i, I, I buy these things i collect these things uh, you know, if you do have them, please reach out. I'm local to your suburb. I live in here or something along the lines of that or love, live in your city or something along the lines of that. Advertise it on your car. Uh, it might be just a case of just getting a little, you know, custom printed sticker on the back of your back screen, windscreen of your car saying, hey, look, I buy Skylanders or I buy you know, vintage toys or I buy vintage shirts or all these different things. Um, just let your community know what you are sourcing because I think, and for me personally, right, thrift stores, uh, they're used out of convenience. Uh, people don't necessarily want to sell their product because they, it's, you know, they have to put photos, they have to list and all these different things. If they see a car drive past, um, so, you know, basically identifying a certain product that they're looking at donating and they're going to get some money from it, they probably will make a call because <laughs> it's a lot easier. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Yay. Cool little mandolin. Um, just the number. Uh, blow molds. I really wish we had blow molds over here in Australia. I've never seen them and I don't think we do. Um, I love Halloween and I've said it numerous times. Probably part of the reason why uh, my alter ego is an octopus. Uh, potentially, I'm not too sure, but blow molds, I would love them. It makes work fun every day. These are just items that we currently have up. So it's a Patagonia digital camo reversible pink. And this thing sold for $995. Whoa. And there's your single stitch Betty Boop. So going back to what I was saying before is that I really have no problem with uh, Goodwill doing this. I don't have any problems with you know, Salvation Army, Vinnie's and all these different things. Because realistically, a lot of resellers, they whinge and complain and moan and groan about all these different things. But they don't show the initiative to actually you know, intervene on these donations right so basically like i said before just do something you know spend fifty dollars on business cards spend fifty dollars on a thousand pamphlets or something like that do a letterbox drop and i can guarantee you probably have more stock come in uh then you'll know what to hand what to do with it. and you can probably match the name your price because these people are probably looking at moving this stuff on getting rid of it they don't want to see it um and it's insane look at facebook marketplace look at all these different things craigslist gumtree and all those different things just don't sit here you know yeah, like I am right now, uh, whinging and carrying on about these stores, taking advantage of the situation. You need to interject those donations and go from there. Shirts, 151 bucks. Do you guys get first dibs ever at any of the stuff that comes through and say, oh man, I'll, yeah, I'll buy that. I need one of those. So I would love that to be the case, but unfortunately we are not allowed to buy anything, period, from our listing location. So the way it works in 
our local stores because I have actually spoken to a volunteer uh, that I'm quite friendly. And by all means, please don't take it out of the volunteers. Don't take it out of the workers regardless of their paid or otherwise, you know, they are doing a job no different to you. Like if I walked into your office and, you know, started berating you and screaming you dressed up as an octopus, you'd probably feel uncomfortable and, you know, you'd probably want me out as well. But you need to be mindful of the fact is that, you know, Goodwill's policy might be this in that location. Um, you know, like I said, with, you know, the Salvos and Vinnies around my area, uh, they get a 50% discount for working volunteers. And I think it has to stay on, on the floor for a day before they can actually purchase it. Once again, I don't have a problem you know, with these different things, with the, the shop workers, with the volunteers um, purchasing items. But the simple fact is they're volunteering their time. They're working in these stores, um, especially the, the volunteers. Um, realistically, if you want to whinge about volunteers getting any special perks, get off your butt and go volunteer. <laughs> I plan on doing it. Um, and by all means, I'd love to do a, a background check at uh, Salvos and Vinnies. Uh, so please reach out to me if you can. It's 100% a nonprofit. All the extra, you know, income we get goes to running our programs and services. I just feel like a lot of customers don't see it that way. I think, yeah, and take this guy out of the equation because, yeah, he's quite lovely. I have nothing against this employee. Um, but when I did the, the, the short last week regarding... Vinny's, yeah, it's not hard to work out if you zoomed in on the price label. Um, now, discussing that $2,000 item they wanted to have in, in their store as a, you know, ego piece or something, no more than 30 feet or 100 metres, depending which side of the country you're on or side of the world you're on. There was three homeless people begging for money. Um, to me, and, and I was in there the week before, you know, I was basically checking out every weekend or so. And there was a lady that was actually asking for a $5 discount on a skirt because she couldn't, or yeah, a blouse, sorry. She couldn't afford um, the $15 they wanted for it. And they refused. They said that, yeah, come back in a month's time because it'll be marked down to $10. You can get it then. Just oh, take the $10 now. <laughs> like take the $5 discount and move on. You're actually clearing the stock. I will hopefully get some footage um, of the clothing racks uh, in this particular video. You know, Salvos is not as bad, but it is getting worse. They're literally that tight together. You can't, you can't even see what they are. You literally have to pry them aside. Uh, and like I was saying, Vinnie's, uh, sorry, Vinnie's, Levi jeans uh, that I used to be paying seven dollars for less than a month ago are up to twenty bucks, and they're hemmed. So never, 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 never buy hemmed jeans. Mike, it's I can see that. Like, and, and, like... and as myself, like as a as a reseller, I have a bittersweet relationship with it. But yeah. I understand it's your stuff. You should be able to sell it how you want to sell it. So. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Like I said, that if people are donating to these organizations and a lot of the donations are garbage. Uh, my mum, when I was a kid, used to volunteer at the local Salvation Army, sorting through the clothes out the back, just because it was basically, um, it was her way of <laughs> socializing with her friends. Um, and yeah, same thing. You know, like she used to tell me that they would throw out probably 75, 80% of the stuff that came through there'd be dirty clothes nappies you know dirty diapers whatever you call them um in 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 bags so basically a lot of it is garbage and i do know that they've got dumping fees and i know they've got overheads but realistically they need to bring their prices down not so much from a reseller perspective but just to be seen as trying to help the community especially in the cost of living crisis so what's your opinion on resellers being at both goodwill locations and shopping on your website um, so resellers, I think, are a vital part of what we do. Um, to be honest, we try to cut out the reseller as much. So they're cutting out the reseller as much as possible. That's what he's just about to say. I cut it short. So this is what you need to be mindful of, right? So be very, very, very mindful that, that Goodwill may be starting here. That's eventually going to get as technology advances and obviously that, you know, more and more people required jobs that you know goodwill might be able to hire additional people behind the scenes and like i was saying is that they're quite possibly in these reseller groups that people are paying 35 dollars a month for getting all that information subsidized um finding it out skimming it off the top then they're cutting you out of the equation and i know i said that six times but you really need to get it into your head um salvos is doing it vinnies is probably most likely doing it they're doing it on ebay they're doing it on their own platform they're also doing it on depop uh, Depop's new to my knowledge, but you really, 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 you really, I can't stress enough, you need to know that this is happening and this will get worse. Um, you know, especially with the cost of living crisis, people will start 
you know, selling their products themselves for higher prices to pay their rent, to pay for food, pay for their child's medical expenses, all these different things. Um, and thrift stores, when we personally put videos out to say, hey, what sold videos or your Bolo videos, I picked up this Skylander for 10 cents and it goes for $650 Australian, something along to that. They pick up on this stuff and they start looking for this stuff and they start, you know, obviously using it against us to edge us out of the market. So like I said, get in, get as much money in, in reselling you can get out, um, have an extra strategy and move on to something else. Like I've said numerous times, use that money to pay off debts, use that money to um, take care of any, you know, anything you require, like granny needs hearing aids. Um, I, I need a new microphone. Um, and go from that perspective. Like, yeah, personally, like I would be redirecting funds into a project or a business that you want to start up. Like, yeah, if you want to create mouse pads or you want to create stickers or you want to create anything, re redistribute that reselling money into products that you can actually sell, build. And I strongly suggest that you have an online social media presence, get known in the community, start building your structure up, start building a community behind you. Then, you know, find out what your your personal YouTube community needs or your social media community needs. Yeah, you know, sell makeup to them, sell stickers to them, sell whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with that. I have nothing against that. But yeah, realistically, reselling is going to be dead uh, or very different in the next couple of years. It's possible. We definitely rely on them to move, to purchase some of our product. To purchase the junk, that's what he's saying. But ultimately, we really want to get the product in the final user's hands. How many items would you say you list a, a day on average? Uh, per day, we list at this site anywhere between 300 to 400. From here, the listers go ahead and on average, I dare say 95% of resellers out there probably list zero items a day. I personally try and get about five items a day. Um, I list, um, you know, by value opposed to actually items. You know, if this, for example, this Skylander, yes, it, you know, it's called a yawn trap. If you don't know what they are, look it up. <laughs> You're going to get real sick of me what, talking about Skylanders. This goes for $650, right? Um, but if it's obviously, if I'm looking to list $500 a day, I won't list one item. I'll list a couple. And that being an item, if I've got a couple of really big ticket items, like I showed a, a Guitar Hero, um, or sorry, Rock Band band box, which probably goes about seven fifty, um, I wouldn't list them on the same day. I'd probably stagger them a couple of days and list a couple of lower priced items with that six hundred and fifty or seven hundred and fifty dollar item, and go from that perspective. That theory isn't new. So if you've only heard YouTubers talking about it in the last fortnight, people have been doing it for years and years and years. <laughs> it just infuriates me when. Yeah, you know, people talk about the next best thing that's been around for And take one of any research on the items to go ahead and title it correctly. Um, Even that photo station setup uh, looks familiar. Uh, so basically what they're saying is they're learning how to, to list correctly uh, titles, you know, hanging photos and all those different things. Their processes, you know, probably down to the phones and all these different things. So these guys, are, they're pros, right? So. I'd be quite curious to see if they are, I wouldn't say failed eBay resellers, but yeah, may have given up reselling to pursue full-time employment, which is nothing wrong with that. If you've got a skill set, use it, monetize it. Uh, and that's something you need to be very mindful of. Is the Photograph and list the item for sale. So each lister... It's been upset that he didn't do the um, the one-to-one -one orientation on that. He had a four by three by the looks of it. He gave a have a look at his camera. Um, when you take photos, make sure it's the square view um, and center the item as much as possible. Subscribe. Does a minimum of 40 listings per day. So DNR does all of our authentications here. Purses, shoes, clothing. Good timing. This is a pair of Gucci, yes. perhaps. Yes, well, we'll see. So we have some sandals right here. I usually just go to my orders and then I am able to just punch in the brand that I need. And then it tells me exactly what pictures I need to take in order to authenticate them. I do have a little bit of a question that's probably off topic. Um, and by all means, yeah, I'm going to get sick of saying leave it in the comment section below, but I want to engage with you. I want you to talk to me. I'm lonely. <laughs> I've got a, a seven-year-old cavalier next to me that's snoring and being harassing me. Kids are in their rooms. They refuse to talk to me because they have Roblox and Genshin Impact and everything else between. And and I know I'm, I'm going a little bit off topic, but I had to spend $400 on two Hatsune Miku tickets. I don't even know what it is. Um it's a anime character my daughter was telling me she wants to you know it's only 
father-daughter time when she wants me to spend four hundred dollars on a couple of tickets. Um, but it, it's a it's an on it's a, not even a real person. It's on a screen, so I'm paying four hundred dollars for a two-hour movie. <laughs> so please, please, please indulge me. Put me put some comments in the section. Uh, put some insert some comments below um, because I'm losing my ability to talk to people, and it's crazy. It'll tell us whether the thing is real or fake right here and it pops up with a certificate that we are able to um, print off. How long does it usually take? I'm really getting the sound, sick of the sound of my own voice here, but rubber bands on the desk, that bag of rubber bands, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend if you are selling electronics in any capacity, please buy uh, those rubber bands. Um, I don't have anything on my desk at the moment, which is surprisingly because my desk is normally a complete uh, shamozzle. No, I wasn't going to say shit fight, but hey, they were I just did. But if you get those bands, put your cables together. Don't scrunch them up in, you know, in tire and not all those different things when you're sending them out or when you're taking photographs of them. Kind of bend them, if that makes sense, and put a rubber band about them and take a photo. They'll look infinitely better, um, especially when you're selling products, especially like cameras. You know, like you can put, I don't know if you can see it in there, but um, I've got the cables tied up with a rubber band. Uh, that's how I, I bag my cameras after I sell them. So what I do is I put little Ziploc bags uh, cords in one and camera in the other so they don't cross and scratch each other. Then I put it in a big Ziploc bag and they get stored away in my inventory system. So if you're looking at selling cameras or Game Boys or DSs or whatever has a screen and whatever's you know, valuable and can be scratched, uh, definitely keep it separate for the things that can scratch it. There you go. Subscribe. <laughs> I'll, 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 get it, I'll get through to you one time. To get results. He is very informative. Um, I actually love him. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I must say, yeah, you know, I don't know what the comments say about him. It's my back to spasm. The uh, the pleasures of getting old. Um, he's phenomenal. He knows his stuff back to front. And this is something that we mentioned in the podcast coming up on Tuesday. Um, it's a bit. It's really hard being a content creator. Well, <laughs> not that I'm very good at it, but if you we did a podcast this morning for Tuesday, but this video comes out tonight. So the podcast comes out in two days in the future or wherever you are watching this video. Um, but going back to what I'm saying, because, you know, hey, <laughs> why not a scattered brain? He knows his stuff back to front. And I said it numerous times in the podcast. A lot of people that get into reselling, they're not even aware that eBay has fees. They don't know that you have to pay postage, you know, when the buyer pays postage or on your item. Um, the amount of comments that I see is that, hey, do I have to pay postage on this? You know, I thought it was free postage because I, yeah, I put free postage or that eBay took $12.80 out of my $100 sale. What's going on with that? Um, this guy knows more than you. You need to know more than this guy to succeed at reselling. You really need to hone in on niches. Um, I will like, you know, I plugged my Friday Night Live coming up this week. Uh, if you're in the States, it's probably Thursday, very, oh, sorry, very early Friday morning. But I will be teaching you how to do very deep dive research into niches very quickly. How I do it, how I became probably one of the, if not the best <laughs> person that knows about Skylanders um, from a reselling perspective on YouTube, uh, very high in the sell through rate on Skylanders on eBay Australia as well. Um, for all intensive purposes, and you know, Granny's not here to tell me to stop talking about Skylanders. About 70% of my Skylanders go to America in, the, in Canada, right? You really need to open your market up to international shipping. If you're in Canada, if you're in America, if you're in the UK, vice versa. You know, use your global shipping programs. We don't have global shipping program. Uh, use whatever you can to open that market bigger than what you need to do. Like I said, get in, get as much money as you can, get out. Um, it's not going to be the same. Dan, our free from the organization gets shipped in to us. It's all unsourced. Kind of looks like a <laughs> something that someone would get offed on, like in, Clu in Cluedo. I think you call it Clue in the States. Uh, it's a chandelier, you know, Professor Black with the chandelier in the box room. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, I don't play video. Uh, I don't play board games. <laughs> I always lose. Bad everything from Mar especially when I play by myself. Marty Grabby, our thermo scientific tester. So we just go ahead and take the item, and then we just place it right on there and close it down and then we hit the magic button it's 18 karat gold and it will tell us the other elements that are in it obviously we do have a gem tester too pretty straightforward it'll go ahead and give us the gem a lot of really high-end jewelry comes through here just in the past year we so a lot of people and yeah everything's a yeah everything 
cut that bit out, Josh. Everything is eventual, right? So everyone's going to pass away. People aren't, you know, especially if they don't want to deal with their parents' estate, so they deal with a, a long less relative, geez, I'm losing how to talk, uh, relative that they don't know or don't really engage with. Might say, hey, look, Goodwill, back it up, take everything. And they could potentially walk away with four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry, especially <laughs> if you don't know what they have. Um, so be very mindful of the fact that Keep an eye out. Sold a twenty thousand dollar Rolex, eight thousand dollar Cartier brooch. Um, so at this particular site, everything starts at nine ninety nine. Whether it's so on salvostore.com uh, .au, they they price things um, as buy it now listings, right? So Skylanders fifty dollars, yeah. T-shirts twenty five, thirty dollars, depending on what it is, right? On eBay, they do nine ninety nine starting bid as well. Granny and I were talking about this. I don't know if it was on the podcast or before when we were speaking, before we launched the podcast. Um, people overpay for these things. They basically hear me talk about Skylanders and how this particular Skylander goes for $650. Yes, subscribe. <laughs> Did you like that? Um, then they go overbid on Skylanders because, you know, regardless of how many times I say 99.9% .9 of Skylanders are completely useless. There's about, out of maybe 100 Skylanders, probably two or three um, that are worth good money. This, well, yeah, this is going to blow your mind. I've actually got two of them at the moment, the third one coming. Um, so basically these ones I come across maybe once a year. I've been sniping these ones off. I've been catching these. Not where the price point I like to buy them at, um, just at a price point I can make a profit. You need to be very mindful. Don't ever buy things because you don't know what they are. I, I can tell people what my bolos are because they don't know what they are. <laughs> so be very mindful of listening to people on YouTube and trying to sell you things because unless you know how to deep dive and how to research that product very quickly and very thorough, you're going to do yourself. It's in. a $20,000 item. It's going to start at $9.99 and it will be the pure bidding process. We want to let the market go ahead and determine the value and the customer to set their own price. And would you say that you're really going to get sick of my voice? However, if you're running auctions, don't. And if you must run auctions, have them finish between 7 and 9 p.m. on a Sunday night. Don't if I'm going to be brutally honest, and I'll give you something for nothing because there's a lot of people that won't get to this point in the video. I picked these up because they finished at, I think, 4 o'clock on a Friday or 3 o'clock on a Saturday or something along the lines of that. So they put them in auction. Uh, I picked them up from that perspective because they are outside that hot period where people are actually watching these things actively. So if you are a reseller looking to source on eBay, look at those auctions that finish not necessarily early morning because they might be trying to cater to the international market. But if they're finishing in Australia, especially in Eastern Standard Time around two o'clock or 11 o'clock or something along that really obscure times that they don't really have anything associated with it other than, hey, I'm going to list this on as an auction because I'm going to make millions of dollars and I'll list it right now at 11 o'clock and I will see how it goes. Don't do that. Please don't do that subscribe when people do go on shopgoodwill.com that they get better deals than they would elsewhere um or is it about I, the same is i think it... it's i think they will get better deals than things like ebay last count i think we were the number two pure auction site right behind ebay there are opportunities to get better deals than you'll see on other reseller sites do you have any tips for people who want to buy something on Goodwill. Make sure you're available to bid at the last minute because a lot of customers do. That's called sniping. Um, there used to be programs that used to snipe for you. So basically in the last, I think 10 or 15 seconds, you'll actually see you know, an item go for $9.99 and might get up to $54. It might be worth you know $600, $700. Um, in the last 15 seconds that you will see that value drop, uh, you know, shoot up like three, four, $500. So, you really, really, especially if it's a hot item um, and there's a lot of watches, eBay personally will tell you how many people are watching that or they've got, you know, how many people have it favorited and all these different things. Um, especially between those peak periods, you know, like I said, you know, 7 to 9 p.m. on a Sunday night, they're the ones that are going to be sniping. They'll, they'll pop in at, right at the last minute because they don't want to waste their time putting a bid of $9 a week ago, then hopefully they get it. They'll, they'll basically jump in at the last second and try and snipe it from that perspective. The last second bidding, we see a lot of prices jump up dramatically in the last day and the last minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this this man more and more as I go on. Um, the snipers, we know who you 
There you go, sniping. You are. Yeah, yeah, they're in there. <laughs> and that's, you know, you probably have some YouTube people tell you that sniping is the latest, greatest thing and it's been around for three days. <laughs> but I used to snipe when I used to buy arcade boards for arcade machines. Um, you know, one foot flipper, if he's watching, I highly doubt that he is. Um, so basically, big arcade boards, they're kind of like video games, but big, big, big. Um, I used to snipe them in the last uh, minute. So that's how you have to get them back in the day. Yeah. Set up a lot and everything, make sure everything works. See that it makes sure, like it can read the games and stuff. So there is actually a website that I can use that will uh, get rid of parental controls and stuff. Don't let your kids see this at home. I'll actually drop uh, that website in the description field and I'll also probably put it in the comment field as well. I actually use this religiously because I would dare say that at probably every 10 3DS units that I get, especially the 3DS XLs or the new ones, have parental locks on them. You basically uh, just use this program, put some data in and off you go. It'll actually unlock it. It looks like it does the Wii. I know it definitely does the Wii U as well because I have used it for that previously. Um, so what I will do is I'll put that link in for that website to unlock your Wii, Wii U, or Nintendo 3DS, XL, whatever it is. It will work anywhere. It's an international site. So realistically, the same thing's a different thing. Um, let me know. Here it comes again in the comment section below if you want me to create a, a dedicated video for that. Um, when I create dedicated videos showing people how to do anything, they don't perform very well. So I want to make sure that there is an audience for them um, because, like I said, I'm not doing this for my my health. <laughs> I'm actually doing this because, you know, I want to teach people. I actually quite enjoy uh, walking through and talking about this stuff and going from that perspective. So definitely, 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 if you are interested in that, let me know and I'll make a dedicated video for you. It literally takes you five minutes on your first turn. Uh, second turn, maybe two minutes, and then every other turn after that, because you know what you're doing, less than 60 seconds. It's really quick. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> the only video games that I've seen were, I went to a Goodwill grand opening in Georgia, and they actually had a bunch of stuff on the yeah. shelves. I was shocked to see this actually, but anytime I come here, I feel like it all comes to this location, right? And you guys yeah. sort through all that. So, <laughs> In Australia, like this, I'm talking to our American friends. I don't know about the UK. We'll, we'll, we'll include you in that sense. Wii Sports to us is a diamond dozen, right? Well, I come across so many copies of Wii Sports for 2 or $3. Um, but the problem is they're region, they're region locked, right? So I'd be more than happy to supply them and send them over, but they're, they're, they're locked to power systems. Um, but yeah, like I said, that it, it's quite funny in that respect. But getting off topic, bringing it back onto topic, uh, all the thrift stores that I deal with are always completely filled of, uh, you know, FIFA, NHL, NFL, or something along that. Uh, all those crappy EA sports games, and they want like ten dollars, fifteen dollars for it. Very, very, very seldom that you find something decent. Um, unfortunately, about six months ago, I found a copy of Deadpool to uh, sorry, Deadpool for PlayStation Four uh, for two dollars in my um, Salvo store that I like going to listed it and sold it for 100 bucks. Uh, it's now probably about 250 X-Men Origins uh, for the PlayStation 3. It's like um, a Logan game. Same thing, you know, picking it for $5, $10 every, every time I got a PlayStation 3 lot, uh, selling it for probably $30, $40. Now it's up to $250. So keep an eye out for movie and tie-in games, especially like Deadpool, Wolverine games at the moment uh, because Deadpool's coming out. It's a fantastic movie, by the way, if you haven't watched it already. <laughs> Definitely don't recommend taking your kids like my, uh, my friend took her nine-year-old <laughs> uh, i wouldn't have done that but yeah definitely if there's a movie coming out that has you know like maybe an x-men movie or an avengers movie stuff along the lines of that um find something that's very niche like with that particular character like deadpool being a prime example or x-men origins those games didn't get re-released because they're very niche in the characters even though deadpool's quite crazy at the moment um they're the ones you want to be looking out for and don't hold them longer for you need to so don't hold them for years and years and years on the off chance that something may come out. Um, you know, if you can quick flip it, quadruple, you know, 10 times your money, good for God. Uh, but alternatively, uh, if you, I knew that a Deadpool 3 was coming out, I should have waited. Mm. Yeah, it is what it is. We have in the past listed it in store, but you know, really the prices that we garner here are so much higher. And every time I've ever seen game. And that's another thing. Ed. Um, that you really need to be mindful of, right? So why, because, you know, I was chatting to a couple of people in Grumpy Granny's Discord the other day, and they were talking to their local um, thrift stores and op shops and whatever you want to call them. 
Uh, in, op in Australia, we call them op shops. In the UK, I think they call them charity shops. Uh, US, obviously, thrift stores. But their their um, thrift, uh, sorry, their theft rate, uh, their thrift rate, uh, their theft rate was very high, like sixty percent. I don't know if I agree with that, uh, but it was insanely high. Uh, which is a reflection on the community, right? Like, not in a bad way, but in the sense of saying, hey, look, if these people are resorting from stealing from charity, uh, there's probably a reason for that. You know, they're obviously desperate. They need need that clothing. I'm not talking about, yeah, stealing video games and DVDs, right? Um, you know, the, they need these items. And like I was saying before, you know, <laughs> many, many, many times ago where... They're talking about a two thousand dollar item they want to have as an ego piece in the store when a hundred meters 50 meters down the road there are people actually begging because they're homeless they want money they want food these people aren't even asking for money they're, they're basically wanting food um and food for their pets that are there as well we we live in quite an affluent country we, we live in quite a i suppose a rich country and to see that in the streets i'm not getting political and i'm not going to talk about it for too much longer uh it's quite yeah it's quite sad to see um and it's even sadder to see where these stores, which are you know, designed to help them and domestic violence victims and all these different things, aren't doing what I would assume that they would do. Um, I'd happily donate $5 or $10 to like a slush fund at that, at that charity shop or that op shop so that if someone was homeless came in and needed clothing, that they had a little bit of money in a jar or something like that, they could go to contributing for clothing or for food or whatever they need from that perspective. But I really don't trust these stores, to tell you the truth. Like, you know, they would just put it back in their register and that'd be their daily takings. Like, really, it's a sad state of affairs. Games on the sales floor, they don't get to everybody. There's one customer that comes and, and they're gone. Zone. It's either sold online or we are running some of the games through our ebooks department that's at the end of the building. It basically, will tell us whether that product will sell online. And then that software will automatically list those items online for- Look at the overheads that these people are using. So Goodwill, like going back, you know, just making it relatable to the Australians. You know, Salvos, Vinnies, and every other, you know, organization probably savers as well. They're eventually gonna have a setup like this, right? And they, they look at the overheads. They're buying machines that identify the, can, the composite of metals you know telling him what carrot gold things are you know gem detectors you know programs that tell them how much things are going for so instead of redirecting this money back to the community and helping those programs i just mentioned 20 seconds ago they're they're, they're trying to increase it into infuriate amounts I, I really have no problems with people that have backdoor access to these kind of organizations and say hey look here's 500 dollars every skylander that you get comes to me or something cool onto that i really don't care because that money is being redistributed and obviously hopefully um, pushed back to where it's required uh, and not to buying probably hundred thousand dollar machines to identify yeah a ring that may come in every six months oh, i don't know us, this is basically the library that we have of books that are all listed online it's it's a new program for us and you know we're kind of in the infancy everyone like literally everyone in youtube land that knows me knows what i think about books please don't be a bookseller um if you're a bookseller look for a new niche immediately i was going to call you something else but i thought i better not do that because i want you to subscribe and not give me a dislike um i'm eating fishman's friends <laughs> which is very on point for my character um these these like yeah book, uh, goodwill they have media rates they have charity rates uh, they're getting these books for free so they can actually send them out quite cheap so where you might be able to say hey look i need to send this book for 20 dollars for with free postage or something along that to break even or to make a little bit of profit these people might be selling them at nine dollars and cutting you out of the market plus books are a dying medium people are moving across the streaming services like dvds as well they're dying um video games are dying you know, obviously that yeah Xbox Live, which is basically like Netflix for Xbox. Books, you know, people are reading them on their iPads, their, their Kindles, their whatever the hell <laughs> else is running around in that capacity. So please get out of the book niche. You know, like I said, if there is an opportune book, yeah, that you can make a couple hundred dollars on, um, like really obscure comic books, really obscure manga, all those different things, uh, buy them. Or, you know, like I said, very obscure DVDs. Uh, buy them, you know, pay a dollar, two dollars. I paid a dollar, two dollars each for these. Um, sell them. Yeah, just don't specialize in it because what happens?
you, you will come undone. Like I said, that Rennie and I, and I have mentioned numerous times in the podcast, we have had people reach out to us and let us know that they've gone bankrupt following advice. The most popular books, they move quickly. We are only making like a dollar fifty to two dollar profit. And Megan, you guys probably scammed through what, like fifteen hundred books, something like that. One thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven, and I listed eighty. And Megan scanned nine hundred and thirty-one and listed forty-three. So this goes to show you the ratio of what books are worth. Um, especially when they said that they're making a dollar, two dollar profit on each book. So if they are listing. You know, close to a thousand books or two thousand books and listing under a hundred uh gives you an idea of uh the structure of books and all those different things like skylanders uh 99.9 percent .9 of junk and probably with every a lot of categories actually uh so just be very mindful of that wow. and that's just on one day so this goodwill it drives all of our programs 100 percent of the revenue that we make goes towards supporting our operations and supporting our mission. And every time you purchase through from one of our sites, you know, you're helping create opportunities. That I don't know about you, but you can actually hear the, the tone shift in his voice. Cause when he was talking about listing and how much he was getting through items and through goodwill and all those different things, he was quite ecstatic. He was quite upbeat. He was happy and jovial. And when he's basically saying, hey, look, do you have a message for the resellers that buy from Goodwill? He goes flat, he's disinterested, he's just basically running through the company line. This organization doesn't want you in the store buying stuff. They basically, they probably don't want anyone in the store buying stuff because realistically, theft from employees is quite low. Um, you know, obviously they can take care of that uh, by firing them. If they're not paying uh, shop fronts, they're not paying employees in the store, um, they're pro they're their, their model's probably geared towards actually moving away from thrift stores or you know store fronts uh, and moving directly onto line. And I'll be quite curious to see if that's a long-term thing or a long-term trend that we will see in a few change lives. So what I'll do is I will put Tice Tice Baby's um, details in the description and the comment section below. Please go across and check out the video. I will cut this video <laughs> up. It's currently an hour. I'll try and get it under 20 minutes. So this is something you need to be very mindful of. I definitely, definitely, definitely go across and watch his video. It goes for about 12 minutes. It's fantastic. It's something that's coming down range. So please, please, please don't, you know, overspend, don't, you know, jump willy nilly into uh, reselling groups that try and sell your products uh, or send you, sell you monthly memberships and to do all these different things. Yeah, by all means, support YouTubers, support people who are actually showing you how to do things. Not myself, I'm not, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not begging from that perspective, but you know, by all means, you know, I know I joked a lot through the video, please subscribe, please share the video. I really appreciate a comment um, and go ahead, check out the other people that, you know, in the YouTube space, in the reselling community, and just do some of your own research. You know, it doesn't take much. Um, do some very, you know, don't do deep dives, but do deep dives in the sense of doing it very quickly. There are very easy ways of getting around it. It will probably two, three minutes will give you four or five hours worth of research. So if you really know where to look, you know <laughs> it can be quite easy. Um, there's really no excuses for doing it. But anyway, thank you very much for persevering with me this long. If you have gotten this far, I'd really appreciate it. If you click on one of these other videos, let YouTube know that I'm somewhat decent <laughs> or even somewhat better than Granny. Um, and if you haven't already, check out the Geelong Flipper. He um, has a channel, channel membership right here. So um, yeah, go and check him out and help him from any capacity you can. Bye.